<laughs> We're back in the Rockies. We're here in Golden, BC, and uh, it is freezing like minus 25 Celsius right now. Uh, I am not ready for this yet. I'm still in summer mode, but looking forward to it. Got a good group of guys. Going to get out on some snow and have some fun. Who followed us in, Aaron? Nice. <laughs> Stop finding my secret spot. <laughs> <laughs> they just come natural to me i'm sorry <laughs> you can cut through here yeah go up and over and come out way the fuck in a different zone oh no way yeah sick you fuckers <laughs> yeah i know well i got to there i'm like oh it looks kind of steep but it's pretty open in the bottom let's yeah. drop <laughs> good job we're just gonna wrap around this mellow yep. perfect I'll follow you. I'm rolling. season's pretty fun. It's like hard enduro on a snowmobile. So sick.
I think I got the sickest scenic of you doing a wheelie there. Sweet. Yeah. And the light fuck. So good in December. Go for it, dude. What's that? Not like really kick out. They say that the last in town I've gone in that little pocket. Oh yeah. Sure. Might be rocks in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Side, I mean, like your motor side. I would think going right would be the answer. Looks like the wind's going this way. <laughs> blurry as hell, Brad. It's blurry? Nice little wind deposit in there, man. Yeah. <laughs> See if we can do a little fall. This might be good. <laughs> <laughs> I just changed mode somehow. Oh yeah, buddy, here comes the boost. Yeah! Yeah, kid! Yeah! Trey Saunders. That was sick! a boy. Woo! Yeah, dude. That was so dope. Looks so good. I want to tell for you good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the more speed, the better. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, clinic 101 with Turcot, I guess. <laughs> uh, boy, Trace. Faster is better, except for on the side hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll go back that way. So we just broke into the zone. It was a freezing cold trail ride up. Uh, we just did a bit of playing around on some hills back there. Trace and I got upside down a little bit on the sleds and uh, 
part of the part of this course or this clinic this weekend is we're gonna do a little bit of avalanche safety. So we're gonna stash some beacons, and try and find them with the group of guys. Take charge, right? So someone's gonna take be the guy, and he's gonna be like, okay, how many people are buried? Who saw it? You know, how many people in the group are you missing anybody? If you think you're only searching for one and there's three buried, it sure gets real confusing, right? So we want to be able to find out not only how many people are buried, but what was the last point they were seen, right? And that gives you an idea of the trajectory based on the slope angle and how much mass came down and the, you know, the, how, how deep you think they're going to be buried. And it's just, you're just trying to build this map in your head before you even start your search. You want to kind of an idea of where you want to start, where you think they're gonna, where you think you're gonna find them, and uh, and as a group, who's gonna be the lead searcher, and that lead searcher also has to instruct the group to turn all their transceivers to search, or get out of the way, back up off the scene, and you know whether whether they're gonna help the search or not, yeah, uh, they can they can step aside. One, more. yeah, one of the most confusing things in searches is when you got this other dude who rolls into the scene and he's still on send and now you're certain you had like 22 meters straight ahead and now you're bouncing between 22 meters and five meters the guy who's walking beside you right really confusing so you want it when you take charge you want to make everybody either switch to uh to search mode or get off the scene and if they're going to get off the scene you might as well instruct them to get their shovels and probes out so they can be helpful if necessary. Yeah. So you know a lot just from that first yeah. like couple seconds. So we're gonna follow, you always wanna keep that arrow centered. So you guys, no matter what each beacon's doing, follow your center line, keep your arrow centered and start walking. If the arrow changes direction, put it back in the center and keep following it. Right, the audio's changed and your directional arrows have disappeared, right? Yeah. yeah. So now it wants you to get your transceiver closer to the snow, right? Because obviously they're buried under the snow. And now at this point, you don't want to change the orientation of your transceiver. the orientation of the transceiver yeah. during the fine search. So we'll keep keep going in. Hear the audio? It's getting more exciting. So once you get your lowest number yeah. in that direction, you want to follow it even though you're orientated the same. Now you want to move it to the right, keeping it orientated the same. Watch your numbers. Back to the center. Then out to the left, really focusing on keeping the orientation of the transceiver in the same direction. And then you go front to back, right? Front, back. And then you nice job. Flag it. And then you would probe, right? Yeah. You can either mark it. So guys, uh, by no means was that an AST, but uh, just a good refresher for everybody to be confident with their gear, not just carry it, but be confident that you can use it if an emergency ever happens. Uh, if, if anything, like I strongly encourage an annual refresher, um, go back out, even if it's just a classroom or a field day, one or the other, but every year I think it's really good habit to do a refresher. So I'm pumped, you guys did really well, um, but keep practicing.
You guys all good? You guys remember like a handful of episodes ago and then the one viral clip on Instagram I did that big re-entry so I went off of that spine right there did a left for re-entry and landed by those trees it looks so gnarly without any coverage right now <laughs> Hey Aaron, what are you doing up there? I hit a rock. I hit something fucking weird. It looked like you hit I'm a rock. I'm going to walk. Yeah, I don't know if I hit an old tractor, but I hit something weird. I think I've seen it jolt, yeah. That's not a very good place to fall be able to be. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm going to walk. Yeah, I'm going to walk. Yeah, I'm going to walk. Oh, shit, it's big fucking tractor! Oh, buddy. A little pucker factor there. A little pucker factor. Had to do some logging. Just teaching everybody what not to do. <laughs> yeah, get a little bumper damage. Oh yeah. A little headlight damage. A little oh, chip wow. tooth there. Chip, <laughs> oh chip or tooth. So, if you drop down to the creek, you can diverse along the creek come back out the next one. Sick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
gnarly in here. Course it's the end of the day. <laughs> Trace and I are just screwing around and uh the 146 9R is working. It's <laughs> making me work actually. <laughs> On the 9R, still so much fun. Still as much fun as I remember it from last spring. So uh, looking forward to the rest of the season. It's gonna be a long one. Got clinics pretty much all winter long. So if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, drop me a comment, hit the like button, and we'll see you in the next video.